Hey everybody, welcome back to this special feature length episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy VI and let's just get into this opera house here. Oh, that's some nice ragtime music you got there. Let's talk to this impresario. Ah, you again! What's he got to say? I read that letter. Setzer's coming to steal her. He'll probably appear right at the climax of scene one. He loves an entrance. <laughs> right, if we could only grab him then. What? <laughs> You're just going to like kidnap him and hijack his airship? Dear me, no! You'll ruin the performance! I'll lose my job! Oh, don't be so dramatic, impresario. Then your history. What? So Celis is gonna beat him up unless he, like, an answers to their demands. This is simply horrid. I want the performance to be a success, but I don't want Maria to be abducted. Yeah, I mean, that's- well, Maria's already missing, so, I mean... Well, is she? I can't remember whether she's missing or not. Let's just say she's not missing. We'll let him grab her. What? Lock? What? How? No! We'll use Celis as a decoy. After she's abducted, I'll follow him right to his airship. <laughs> oh my god, Lock. This plan is just too... There's so many things that could go wrong. Are you mad? If something should happen to Maria, I agree with you, impresario. Oh man, he reminds you of... of um. He reminds you of Steiner when he does that. Do you know the way he, Steiner always gets so hot under the collar? It's just like... That's why the decoy will hide Maria somewhere safe. Shouldn't you ask Celis if she's willing to go through with this? Come again? Yeah, you better explain yourself, Locke. What are you doing? You said she looks like Maria, right? Celis is like... Um, now just a minute. <laughs> I love the comedy here, it's brilliant. Celis will be our Maria, she'll lead us to the airship. BRILLIANT! No, 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 please, you have to ask Celis if she wants to do this. Wait, wait, I'm a general, not some opera floozy. Yeah, she's no prima donna, she's a, she's a warrior woman. She's like, what's she gonna do in there? Locke, go and convince Celis to do this. Me, me, do, re, me, fa, <coughs> Gee, Celis, cut back on the cigarette. Maria! What? That's such like a West Side Story reference. That's insane. Ha, <laughs> not bad, Celis. Well, you just laughed at her. <gasps> Ultros! Yay! Mwahaha! <laughs> I'll pretend to be Setzer and foil their little plan! What? How can you pretend to be Setzer? What are you just doing dropping that letter down there? You, like, you look nothing like Setzer. They're going to recognize that Setzer isn't an enormous anthropomorphic octopus. Let's get ready. It's showtime. <laughs> oh, poor Celis. Ah, come on, read it! Well, maybe if you didn't just drop it out of the sky behind them, then maybe they'd be able to read it. Oh man, I'm just going to let this speak for itself for the most part because this is one of the most amazing scenes in video game history. Seriously, I'm not lying when I say this. There are very few parts of any video game that I love as much as this. I just, like I'm an opera lover anyway, so. Well, there's the impresario and Locke and Edgar and Gao. I guess they're just going to watch from, this, from the sidelines. Look at all the people that are there. And the orchestra, and the conductor that looks like Tchaikovsky. <laughs> this music is actually very like Tchaikovsky, actually, in the way it's written. The West and the East. Well. We're raging war! <laughs> is that? Did you just pause there for dramatic effect? <laughs> Draco, the West's great hero. Well, what about him, mister? Thinks of his love, Maria. Oh, so he's just setting the scene. Is she safe? Is she waiting? No, I bet she's sleeping with everyone in the whole town while Drake goes away. I mean, it sounds like something that she'd do. <laughs> it sounds like something that happened in an opera, like, I mean... Operas are full of love, sex, violence, all sorts of things. All sorts of things that would, like, never make its way into movies, let me tell you that much. No! I presume that's Draco. If he's going to be, like, tramp- if he's- well, that's what the guy introduced him as.
Oh man, it's getting to me already. The combination of this amazing music and such a well-written script in this part is just fantastic. It really is. Gal, why are you sitting all the way over here on your own? Come up and with your, like, I mean, I know Edgar's not your best friend, but I mean, he's Sabin's brother and Sabin's your friend. What does the impresario have to say? I'm going to the dressing room. Is everything okay? Go right ahead. Well, as if the king tells me I can. Pretty song, pretty song! <laughs> well, if the king says it's okay to go right on ahead, then I guess I will. Um, Locke, why are you walking? I mean, we don't have much time to get to where we have to go. It's nearly time for Celis to make her grand. Oh, Celis, you look so beautiful in that dress. Oh, look at Locke blushing. Aww. It's so cute. Ay, ay, ay! Is that. You? Don't sound so shocked. Celis was always a beautiful woman. Locke, why did you help me escape back there? I once abandoned someone when she needed me. And plus, I mean, I know that you're not a cruel general, Celis, because Locke sees your true colors shining true. Somewhere inside you, you were saving her, weren't you? Well, that's what I said, isn't it? That ribbon suits you. Yeah, way to just, like, change the subject, Locke. On with the show. This is a big scene in which Maria senses that something's happened to Draco. You'd better check the score one last time. Yeah, Celis and Locke, their relationship is so well written in this, like, in this show because... in Not this show. Well, this game practically is a show. In this game, I mean, the way they kind of pussyfoot around because obviously Celis, like... Well, if you haven't noticed yet, you must be blind, because they obviously have feelings for each other, but, I mean, Locke still has his commitment to Rachel, and Celis, I mean, she, well, she has such low self-confidence and self-esteem, first of all, and, like, how could she, like, in her mind, how could she ever match up to a dead girl, I mean, seriously? I don't know. But, like, the song that will always be Locke and Celis' song to me is True Colors by Cyndi Lauper, because it's just, like, it's exactly... Like, go and listen to that and think about them, and trust me, you'll you'll see it. There's another Cyndi Lauper song that reminds me of them as well, but that won't become relevant for quite some time. Read the score? Yes. And you'll see why later. Scene 1. Oh, my hero, so far away now, will I ever see your smile? Love goes away like night into day. It's just a fading dream. I'm the darkness, you're the stars, our love is brighter than the sun. For eternity, for me, there can be only you, my chosen one. Must I forget you, our solemn promise? Will autumn take the place of spring? What shall I do? I'm lost without you. Speak to me once more. Here you pick up the flowers, climb the stairs to the balcony high atop the castle, raise the flowers to the stars. Hurry, you have some moments before the two, before scene two starts. From the Im impresario. I used to think that that was written in the book, so I wondered, like, how the impresario could have, like, known that she'd read it right then. So, I don't know. I don't know, it's kind of crazy. Well, I guess we'd better make our way on stage. Forget those bl butterflies, Celis. The forces of the West fell and Maria's castle was taken. Prince Ralphs of the East took her hand by force, but she never stopped yearning for Draco. Well, I suppose Draco's her true love. The next line is, oh, it's, oh, my hero, isn't it? <laughs>
Oh, it's Draco. Oh, it's not. It's a vision of Draco. Draco! Come, Maria. Follow my lead. Draco, come back. Where are you going? Ha. No, something bad must have happened to him. Yeah, get up those stairs, Celis, with the flowers. That's what you have to do. <laughs> Prince Ralts is looking for a dance partner. You can just step off, that usurper's bastard. Leave the past behind. Our kingdom is adopting the spirit of the East. More like having it thrust upon us. Poor Maria. Slash Celis. Oh man. Seriously, every time I just... I love that part of the game, it just gets to me so much. I cried the first time I saw that because it was just... I wasn't expecting it to be so... so heartrending. Oh, well, here we are. That jackass must be Prince Ralts. Not Ralts. Ralts. <laughs> Prince Ralts. Well, he has green hair. I suppose he could be Prince Ralts. <laughs> um, I kind of... Re I really like the way the... Well done, Celis. Yeah, bravo. I really like the way the, the kind of storyline of the opera seems to somewhat mirror the actual storyline of the game. You know, you have like an, an em one empire that's trying to overthrow another. Like you have one culture that's trying to overthrow another, just like you have in the actual game. I owe you one, so I'm gonna jam up your opera. Ultros. What happened to trying to pretend to be set, sir? Uh-oh, I better tell the impresario. Oh, don't tell the impresario. He'll go mental, seriously. Yeah, what happened to Ultros trying to pretend to be Sets? Or I guess he gave that one up as a bad job, I mean. Like I said, how are they going to mistake an octopus for a gam for like some debonair gambler? Who looks like David Bowie. What? Don't you mean pardon? What's Ultros going to do now? This is like the Phantom of the Opera. The survivors of the West attack! Impossible! Idiotic! Attack! Oh, they attacked them during a ball. During a dance-off. Just like in that, um... Just like in Dirty Dancing 2, Cuban Knights or whatever, or Havana Knights, I don't know. Wait! Who's saying wait? Oh, it's Draco, so he's not dead after all! Oh yeah, well, we knew that already. Oh, shut up! You tell him, Draco. Well, come at me, Ralts, any time. Stand and deliver your money or your life. But how might he disrupt the opera with that? What? Oh no, he's like the opera ghost. Mwahaha! Let's see if Maria can shrug this off! 
Okay, in case you can't see, that is a four-ton block that is apparently resting on a dinky little rafter without breaking it. <laughs> Ultros, yeah, this is heavier than I thought. It'll take me five whole minutes to drop it. <laughs> I love that line. We haven't a second to lose. Talk to the man in the room to the far right. He'll help you get up there. It's as good as done. Yeah, hurry up. At least we have the sprint shoes. Do you know what? I'm going to change to lock here. No. I'm being in front because I just think it's more appropriate. Stop. I always get stuck here. And you have to hurry because as you can see, we're doing this in real time. So, what? The impresario asked me to have you press the far right switch. But why didn't you just press the far right switch, mister? I always get stuck, like, on the seats and stuff when I'm trying to make my, like, rush over to save Celis. That Ultros. I mean, all we were trying to do was hijack an airship. I mean, and he just had to ruin our fun. Quick, hurry, lock. We, no! This part always gives me just, like, rats, get out of my way. Okay, there's something really important here. Um, a back attack, brilliant. You have to kill the vermin first, because um, because otherwise, if you kill the other rat and the vermin is left alive, then the um, stop. And the vermin is left alive. He'll summon other um. Oh good, he'll summon more rats. So I, well, if I I'd concentrate on the vermin if I were you, because obviously the more rats he summons, the more. The more, um, the longer the battle is going to take. So the way to go here is to fight um, those guys with the with Locke, um, and use the martial rage with um, with um, with Gao, because that should, um, if he uses Wind Slash, then that'll definitely take them out. Um, Edgar's Flash is also useful here. I'm going to do this in real time here, guys. No, please don't. See, he did it. Oh, for God's sake. Okay, this, I hope I can do this now. As far as I know, you can skip one of the battles, but I'm not exactly sure. Okay, Edgar's Flash should be able to take these out. Come on, Edgar, we only have three minutes left. Come on. This place, this part always makes me so nervous. Lock in the level. Well, that's great. Um, come on. As far as I know, there are a couple that you can skip if you... No! Okay, come on, take out that vermin. No, come on, down to Marshall, quickly, quickly guys, tools, flash. Okay, well, Wind Slash should definitely take them out, so don't worry. If you use Wind Slash, then you don't have to worry, because Wind Slash and Flash will just annihilate everything, okay? Oh man, come on, we've got to hurry up, guys. Oh, another battle. Come on, we don't have time for all this. part makes me so nervous guys. Okay, flash and attack the that guy. If Locke's counterattacks would go on the would go the right way then I'd be a lot happier. Come on Gao, come on. Well at least there'll only be one left. I can manage that. Brilliant! Thank you! Gao Gao to the rescue everybody! Okay, come on, everybody. Gao learned, learned the level. Locke learned something useless. And well, we've got to make it that octopus. Gotcha! Phew, rats! What's gonna happen now? No! Ultros, you idiot! You're gonna ruin the opera! Celis must be like, oh my fucking god, they didn't just do that. Disaster if the two heroes are flattened, the opera's over. Then who will win the girl? <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, come on. Someone better do something. I mean, when something goes wrong on stage, you've just got to go... You can't just stop and do nothing. No, come on. Oh, you're making me so nervous. Come on, guys. Lock, come on. You've got to do something. Neither Draco nor Ralts will save Celis. <laughs> I, Locke, the world's premier adventurer, will save her. What? Aya! <laughs> uh, what awful acting! Well, he's a treasure hunter or thief or whatever. Silence! Be gone, be gone! You're in the presence of Octopus royalty. A lowborn thug like you could never defeat me. Hmm. Why does well make the most of this music, Maestro? 
Oh, and we get cool battle music as well. Okay, there's more something you should know about. Long time no see! You've changed! Did you miss me? I did. I love you, Ultros. Okay, there's something you should know. Um, Ultros in this battle is susceptible to stop, as far as I remember, which makes him just ridiculously easy. So, um, that's what you want to use. That that completely curries the battle in your favor. The other thing you should know about him is that he's actually um, has less HP than he did the last time. Now you want to use the drill because as far as I know he's um, immune to instant death. I like the way they have the audience in the background there, it's pretty cool. Um, so don't use the chainsaw, use the drill. WHAT AN UNLUCKY DAY! ADIOS! Oh what, we killed him already? See Ultros? Yeah, stop completely messes that battle up in my opinion. Got 2 GP, that's all we got! Well I guess the audience liked it. JUST A DOWN MINUTE! What, who's this? Oh, what's this music mean? What a performance! Oh man! It's it's that wandering gambler! No! Setsu! I'm a man of my word, music man! <laughs> That's him! <laughs> How can he fly? And if he can fly, why does he need an airship? What a reversal! Thinking she's Locke's new queen, Marie is instead nabbed by Setsu! What fate lies in store for her? Stay tuned for part two! Oh well, guess Mr. Impresario managed to turn a negative into a positive after all. You go there, maestro. <laughs> I love the way there are so many double basses in the orchestra and nothing else. It's like the whole orchestra is made of double basses. It's insane. It's kind of orchestra I play in, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> I'll deal with you in a minute. <laughs> oh man. Get me off this thing! Geez, Celis, you're quite prone to getting locked up by people, aren't you? Even though this was all in your plan from the start. What are you doing over there? <gasps> Edgar! Go! Where's the last guy? Oh, Locke. There he is. <laughs> what a performance! Enough already! Yeah, shut up. I mean, Celis didn't do it for the good of her health. That being said, for an amateur, Celis did an amazing job in that opera. But this is a tough one. Part 2 begins now. <laughs> nice opera link there. Where's Setzer? Well, I hope he's somewhere on this ship. Otherwise, who's going to be flying it? He's coming. How oh, is he now? He's taking his sweet... Oh, here he is. H who are you? You're not Maria. She's not Jennifer Connolly, either. Setzer, we need your help. We have to go to Vector. We need this ship to get there. Look, if you're not Maria, I don't want you aboard. You've got nothing for me. Nothing? Nothing? Tra-la-la! -la. Wait. We were told your ship is the finest vessel in the world. Also, now you're just, like, kind of buttering him up. That's the one way you could butter him up. It'd be brilliant. And that you're the world's most notorious gambler. <laughs> Gao, have you anything to add for to this? You could tell him you're shiny, that he's shiny. Maybe he'd like that. I'm the King of Figaro. If you cooperate, you'll be well rewarded. You could just say, I'm the King of Figaro... I'll kill you if you don't give me your airship. <laughs> Come here. Yeah? Don't misunderstand me. I'm still not sure if I'm going to help you. Will you help us if we get through the labyrinth in less than 13 hours? Oh, look, he has like a blackjack table. Oh, cool. Oh, well, we're Edgar again. I'm going to change to Celis for this part because I just like having Celis out in front. <laughs> Phew, the Empire's made me a rich man. If I were a rich man. Deedle deedle deedle. Stop thinking of yourself. Many towns and villages have been smashed by the Empire. Yeah, they were swamped by Hydro Pump! The Empire is also totally rotten. It's using magic to enslave the world. Or so we've heard. The Empire and my realm were allies until recently. Yeah, when they turned Figaro into a barbecue. The Empire. Evil? Nothing, tra la la! We all hate the Empire for the same reason. That's what- well, no, Gao doesn't really have a reason to hate the Empire at all. He's just here because we gave him food. <laughs> you know, you're even more stunning than Maria. <laughs> Look at Celis blushing. Are even her legs blushing? That's insane. And her arms, oh no. <laughs> Enough. If you, if Celis becomes my wife, I'll help. Otherwise... What? Are you stupid? <laughs> 
no, he knows that he's got what you need and that you're gonna do whatever he says to get it off him. We haven't any choice. Oh, this is a I love Celis in this part. She's so funny and clever. Yes, it's settled. But I have conditions. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> we'll decide with a coin toss. If it's heads, you'll help us. If it's tails, I'll go with you. Well, Mr. Gambler, notice how she got the coin off of Edgar, guys. Oh, fine, I accept. Listen to yourself, Celis. You can't just become his wife. You just can't. Don't worry, Locke. She knows what she's doing. Ready? <laughs> Brilliant. <gasps> what did it land on? What could it land on? <laughs> I win! Now honor your part of the bargain. <laughs> How unusual. A coin with identical sides. <laughs> now, when I first saw that line, it made that scene with Ed e Eben. Edgar and Sa Sabin just so, well I suppose you could say Eben and that mean the two of them, so much cooler because obviously Edgar has a two-headed coin and like when he said heads you follow your dream, tails you stay here, like he knew Sabin was going to get heads so he was just giving Sabin an excuse to get out of Figaro and follow his dream and I just, I love that, it's just so, I love the way that it's not just a collect- I love the way they kind of seem to interlink different parts of the story so well in this game, I don't know. I think you've been hustled, Mr. Gambler. <laughs> ha! How low can you get? I love it! <laughs> Alright, I'll help you. Nothing to lose but my life. Jeez, if that's not the spirit of a gambler, I don't know what. Well, at least he keeps his word. My life is a chip in your pile. Ante up! <laughs> Brilliant, I love that line. Um, well, here we are in this big, huge airship. Now, we've been going for quite a while, viewers, but I'm going to stick with it. <laughs> I told you this was going to be a feature-length episode, and I didn't... I'm not going to lie about this. This rusty, steam-driven pile of junk really moves. Could it crash? <laughs> Never. When things fall, they fall. It's all a matter of fate. This ship's going to stick out like a sore thumb. Better land some distance away. I mean, I know, yeah, I mean, it's a big blimp. I mean, could you imagine the Empire just sitting there and being like, Oh, look, an enormous blimp is coming our way. <laughs> right, I'll wait on board in case of an emergency. It's an emergency! <laughs> What's happening now? Oh, it's night time, brilliant. Look at all those searchlights there. Well, for a blimp, it's pretty cool, I've got to tell you that much. And I love blimps, like, I seriously, I often say this, like, I could see the age of dirigibles and blimps and zeppelins, like, coming back, because, like, I mean, like, now we would have hot heat, like, the reason they were so dangerous before is that they had to use hydrogen to power them. But now we can have helium so that they can float in the air, which is a lot less dangerous than hydrogen. And, like, they'd be so much more environmentally friendly because they wouldn't use as much fuel, so... The only thing is that it'd take, like, ten days to get, like, two miles away. Well, here we are in the southern continent, guys, and I think we're gonna leave it, like, as at this for here, so... Um, I hope you liked this feature-length episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy VI with me, Rock Paper Mario. Um, I'll see you next time, and we'll go and see what's what on the southern continent. Um, so, see ya.